Alright. Okay, we have all the students here. Um we most of, have most, is, of is most of them, yeah. I'm just asking them to join in from WhatsApp. Okay. So please let me start off with a short intro first. Yeah. yeah. A very good morning to um, both of our uh, guest speakers, architect panel speakers, okay, for today's um, architect Aslan Sharawi and architect Faris Hilmi. And for today's, uh, it's glad to have both of the architects to be here with us since this is our week 12 uh, with architect weeks. So tomorrow we have another session is with architect Tian Suying. So for today's, uh, our first speaker is architect Aslan Sharawi, the principal at Sharawi Architects, director at Sassan Architect, and also the PTC one panel. We'll be talking about the new wave of Asian architects and followed by our second speakers for today, uh, architect interior designer, Mohammad Hafariz Hume, the lecturer from Sagi University and also the PTC one architect panels. So he will deliver the topics entitled Dear Future Architects. So please take note for each speakers, the time step for you uh, to deliver the talk is around uh, 45 minutes to one hour. But it's quite okay if you uh, have uh, more slides to share, okay, because uh, we are going to go for casual today. And uh, we start with our first speaker first, then followed by second speakers chronologically. And subsequently, we're going to have like around 15 minutes for Q&A sessions. So later on, we are going to um, follow up with our uh, thesis table clicks. Okay, so I have shared the links uh, with uh, all the students and panel. So later on, you can leave the groups and join in the uh, respective uh, table clicks groups later. Okay, so without further ado, maybe let us start with uh, architect Aslan Sharawi first with your topic entitled New Wave of Asian Architects. Okay, that's All right. Uh, um, yes, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, PC. And um, good morning, everyone. Um, I actually, today, I, I kind of changed the, the title a bit. Um, now, this, <laughs> uh, this, this whole talk that I'm going to give, right, um, it's a bit strange because I'm not used to presenting other people's work. But this is more for you DC students, yeah? Um, this new wave of Asian architecture, that I'll be showing you guys. These are works that kind of inspires me. And, and I think that if you, if you could look at it this way, um, whenever I see students um, put their references, you know, if you're a thesis student, you, you put your reference images and everything, but it always ends at the image itself. It's like, okay, this is what I want to um, do or this is what I want to incorporate, but there's never um, a story or reasoning behind it or, or what do you like about it. So let's let's have a bit of a dialogue. I'm going to present um, four projects that I think are um, pretty super in, 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 in how it is executed. Uh, so these are actually my muse and inspirations from neighboring countries, Asia in general. So I'm going to pick um a few uh, countries and how and and projects that actually deals with context relevance and and their execution is perfect and they are all mostly sensitive towards the site so there's only three locations that i'm going to pick i'm not going to mention malaysia because um you know if i mention one architect or the other nanti ada kecil hati you know so i'm just going <laughs> to I'm going to pick, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to pick uh, our neighboring country, Southeast Asia, and one from China. Lah, yeah. Okay, um, let's begin. I think Vietnam has um, a good wave of good architects, actually. You know, you, you, you can look to them and there's a lot of projects that actually deals with um, site sensitivity and, and um they deal really well with the context. But of course, when you talk about projects like houses and everything, they tend to be uh, very different things that you may not be able to implement here simply because our rules are way different. Uh, but I would like to show you two community uh, buildings, right? 
um, that is done by this firm, one plus one is more than two. I don't know. That's I think that's how you <laughs> pronounce this firm. One plus one is more than two. Um, so the two projects deals a lot with the locality and, and the sensitivity towards the site. Um, the first one is actually Chiang Yen Community House. Um, I like this project because what they did, right, what the architect did is that they, they, had, um, they had like free choice of site selection and everything, right? I, I think like you students are as well. But they pick one that could actually capitalize um, the site benefits. They, they saw a site with a lot of potential. They see there's a waterfall there. And instead of the waterfall being just uh, a waterfall, it could be used as um, a functional component of the building itself. So, so let's, let's see how it goes from there. Now, in terms of the context of this building, um, they pick somewhere where there is easily accessed by the locals and they want to attract tourists as well. And this is where they actually hold all the social events and activities. Now, that's only one side of the, the, the whole ideation that they have. The main one in terms of the shape, why it looks a bit odd is because it looks like the ethnic um, headdress of that area. I mean, it is quite literally like that. So that actually forms the, 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 the main architecture look of that building. So you have that framework. Let's talk about a, a bit of your thesis. Like you have that, that, that kind of idea. Okay, I'm, I'm going to derive this out of something. And then you have another portion, which is site context. And then you have another portion, which is the, um, how do you call that? technologies that you want to incorporate and, and how do you deal with heat and how do you deal with ventilation, etc., to your building. Um, so this is, uh, as I mentioned just now, they, they took the headrest and they, they, they actually did this entire main roof. What's fascinating is actually the use of material. I'm not going to say that this building looks nice. It may not be. It's impressive how they actually use the local material and what is available at that point and can be executed by the locals. So that is, that is quite a, a good approach to the building. Um, as you can see here, you do have like an ample space up top where you have the wooden, um, uh, what do you call that? The bamboo frame structure of the building and you have space underneath the, the how, how do you call that? The podium. Um, podium area and the hall and see over here they, they actually use I think this is quite similar to to um, I, I've seen Sarawak houses where it's perched up uh, and they actually use um, a long timber locks cut it off and actually turn it into a staircase now design wise uh, even in your thesis like if you can incorporate something that is relevant or um, you know relatable to your site or the culture of that place, it is an added bonus. Now, the, the building may look simple. Now, this is what's impressive about it because they carried, um, they, they followed through with their whole idea of like, okay, we're going to have this building in the middle of nowhere for the, um, for the people, for the Chen Yen uh, community. And, you know, it needs to be uh, almost maintenance free. You don't need aircon. So how they design the architecture where you have all this thatch roof, um, the bamboo structure that they're familiar with, and the whole shape of it, right? They use the headrest as the main theme, but how they follow through with, with the um, ventilation and how they actually prevent the hot air and, and hot sun to actually go in, that's really impressive. So they use this um, stands area or the festival space to actually drag in all the cool air. And you have all this shape that actually drags out the hot air above. Okay, uh, taking a bigger picture, look at it from a, uh, far. You can see that they're actually using the, the waterfall itself as a turbine. And that actually generates electricity for that hall. 
And from that point onwards, you even have rainwater harvesting and uh, wastewater filtration and it actually goes out. I think this is um, really impressive. Um, if you ask me personally, I may not like the architecture, the shape of it, <laughs> but I like the whole um, the whole project actually and what it delivers. It delivers what it's supposed to. Um, it tackles a lot of um, sensitive issues of the site and it, it gives back to the community. So as you can see here, they, they even use the earth blocks. Um, these are actually local um, compressed blocks. Uh, you guys have this. You guys can do this. The daylight analysis. So they did that as well, even for a building that is, um, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Um, the second project, um, Kamtan Community House. Now, this is more of a um, tourist space, but they do want to give back to the community. It is a community um, uh, building for the locals around there. And, okay, this one is more about design, actually. Um, they, they've taken um, some elements of the uh, old quarter. There is no connection. That was their, their how would you say, the main issue or the thesis title, right? So they're trying to bring in all these tourists uh, and, and their site is located further away, uh, deep in Kampan, and they want to create that link. So, um, and, and also that area has its own challenges, like you, you have uh, typhoons, heat waves, and, and you know, uh, water rising and everything. So what they plan to do is that they try to incorporate all those issues and try to tackle it um, by doing something that is both progressive and also it addresses the the um, old quarters of Kamtan. And I, I think that's fascinating because it shows in the architectural design itself that it does carry or follow through with the old design and the materials are all um, easily sourced for that area. As you can see here, you have local wood, adobe brick, um, the bamboo frames and the coconut leaves. These are the things that they already have and, and they, they could actually, um, you know, incorporate it on the architecture itself. It's, it's fascinating to me. And same, just like the projects before, um, they actually had, like, they really plan out how everything works. Uh, um, like as you can see over here, the roof is tilted to a certain way to allow for rainwater harvesting. Everything serves a purpose, and I think that you know, when 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 you do your thesis as well, like every my point is every single component of your building um, has to have um, some sort of a function. You know, it can be aesthetically pleasing, but they are all there for a reason. So as you can see here, I'm going to show you in the pictures. They actually have um, a bunch of netting. They have all these, um, I, I would say, just palm trees, right? Arika, Arika palms. And they want to actually um, block the sun over this stretch of courtyard because it's extremely hot. You see how they, they actually do it. So as you can see over here, these are all the thatched roof, right? Using the palms. And across this garden of um, areca trees, there's actually nets. And these nets are where plants actually creeps over it and you actually shield off the space below. Not too much, but just enough to cut the, the, the heat wave. And that's, that's really interesting. Now, um, when, when I look at this, right, um, you can see that they, they try to incorporate uh, their ancient houses, right? They, are, they, are, they, they call it ancient quarter houses. And all the elements of the um, convection ventilation is there. And this is relatable to us, Malaysia, because then, you know, um, hot air goes in, goes out, how you actually plan that. And you guys know how to do that. So when you explain your thesis, it is or when you design the building itself, I think that these are the uh, items that people often overlook. Uh, but it's not unachievable. You need to have it as a, a 
I, I would say it's a basic intervention that you need to have for your building, especially in our country. You can't rely on aircon all the time. So um, if you look at this, they, they have the old architecture. They have something that is easily built by the local. And it's quite genius what they did with this um, screen here, right? Where you have the netting that holds all the plants and sheets. Um, uh, the whole space. So it, it is an experimental space that they 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 managed to pull through. And you know, as a as a community space, if you if if you look at this, it's it works, and that's all you need actually. You don't need something that is truly flashy. It can look um, it can look beautiful. The building is beautiful, but at the end of the day, as long as you have all the components in. Your thesis design, you have um, your backstory, you have your technology that supports you, and um, you have a form that is strong and justifiable, then that is good enough. Okay, I'm going to move on to um, Thailand. Uh, um, when I say new wave of architecture, I don't mean uh, young people, yeah, but <laughs> not new wave of young architects or whatever, but um, these are actually buildings or spaces that people don't actually realize were actually done by Asians. And I want to highlight that. Um, this project um, by Bunak Architect, which I'm going to present um, shortly, I, I would say it's the, the one project that um, actually deals with emotions. It's like if you are there, you could actually feel the mood. Okay. It is not much about the cultural sensitivity. It's not about, um, um, you know, a, a local sense of relevance. It's not. But uh, this is one project where I can show and you can even incorporate that in your thesis. Like, okay, if your thesis is something about, I want to deal with senses. This is a perfect example for it. That how do you actually... Um, guide people through even a simple thing like a corridor, you know. So I'm going to show that. Um, this is the Barai Spa. Barai Spa is by Duang Reed Bunak. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He's, he's actually an, um, an, a well-established architect in Thailand. Um, but this project of his is, is actually super, super interesting because, um, you know, the entire site itself, they, they, he actually kept the trees, um, that's something that's extremely difficult to do. So they, they've actually kept uh, all the major trees for, for this project. Um, this is his presentation, basically. Um, I think your thesis presents something else. Maybe Bole, I don't know, PC. <laughs> but must be with dimensions. Lah. So the whole idea that he has is it is, it is a very artistic approach to the building. Because you're building a spa, um, something that actually relates to the senses and all visual hearing um, uh, and even to the touch. So um, they wanted to, to um, how do you know, capture or they showed the client like, okay, I want to create like a body of water that actually reflects all the plants and everything. And and they, they, they actually follow through with that, you know. So you have spaces within... Um, the spa itself that has that language, the whole feel where, where, where each and every pocket space of the spa feels very ethereal. When I say ethereal, it means if you're there, it feels like, oh, this place is so unreal. And that's very fascinating uh, because he manages to actually um, lock you in that vibe of that particular space. And that's something that not many people can do. But if, if you could explore this in your thesis, it's, it's really good. Now, now look at this. Like This is just a corridor way. And it is um, a series of uh, traditional, I would say that's a mix of uh, 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 Thai colonial um, columns, right? But he have it in all homogeneous colors and he played with the, the shadow elements. So going through the space is a journey and even the simplest thing like a corridor um, can project an emotion on 
the user. My point is, every single thing in your thesis, every single portion that you design, it will be good that you pay attention to that space because it is a space with the potential effect like this, you know? You're actually building something for the user, how the user experience it, the, 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 the UI, the UX, you know, that's a modern term these days. So if you could actually reflect that, then it makes for a very, very good architecture, to me at least. Um, like this is one of the tunnels and, and you can see he, it, it is actually very simple. He incorporates all these um, traditional columns, you know, he, he picked the, the elements, not many, but just a few. And, and that actually represents the locality just a bit. And everything else is kept at a certain tone um, to, to, to actually, um, I would say, funnel you, funnel you through that journey. So this is like, for example, you want to go to a spa and you go through this space. It's like, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but maybe UTM, you guys got to like, bring a student trip <laughs> to, to Thailand and, and have a look at this building. Um, it, it is really, really interesting. Now, you go in through another space, you know, from a dark to bright, and that sort of contrast is what I personally like. That you go through a tunnel of something that is dark, he channeled you in, and then boom, you go out, it's like, okay, this is something out of this world suddenly, you know? So, if you look at it, you may think, okay, this feels like an ID or whatever, but it doesn't matter really. A built building is a well-built building works from the outside in. So um, I think that students, my point of my statement is that um, often I see people, okay, I'm going to do a building, look at it from afar, right? It's always from that context. Okay, I'm going to see from the highway and my building looks so damn cool. But actually, you, you, you don't uh, forget that there's actual users that's going to be there. So what are their experiences? You know, when you create a plaza in your, your, your building, you say, okay, I'm going to create a courtyard. What does that courtyard represent? What does it do to the journey? I, I think uh, moving forward, I think whoever that I'll be creating, maybe this is something that we could engage in, you know, um, architectural discourse. So look at this. This is, um, he followed through the, the idea of that reflecting uh, body of water. As simple as that, like you have um, all the almost traditional um, Thai architecture, um, a mix of the colonial, and you have lights and materials to actually follow through with that. And, and this, this actually sells. Okay, um, you see, uh, let's say you have, you have a thesis and, and this is like a part of the building, right? You could actually focus with, um, you know, a detailed section showing how do you actually create that sense of space? Okay, if you look at this section, right? He's trying to funnel in all the lights from the above. And, um, you know, it, there's a very specific um, colors that he's playing around here. But this is the result. And, and you guys actually have the technology to, to actually simulate all this. You can do a simulation of the space. Uh, that means it is a bit more easier for you to actually rationalize your concepts. Yeah, so that's the takeaway from all this. Okay, um, this is the second project from Thailand. Um, it feels a bit post-apocalyptic, all right? Um, this is actually a cultural courtyard. The building itself is a courtyard, Elephant World in Surin, Thailand. Um, now, what's, what's interesting about this project, um, it, it is, this is actually at the northeastern side of Thailand. Okay, um, and they deal with an ethnic group called Kui. Okay, the Kui people actually are the ones who deals with a lot of elephants. Um, we, we're not talking about the abusive kind. Uh, they, they actually live and, and they took care of elephants for generations, right? So 
all the ceremonials, all the, the events and festivities are always revolving a mutual uh, connection between these two, the elephants and the Kui people. So this this um, architecture by Bangkok Project Studio, um, what they actually did is like they actually built a, a cultural courtyard and this is just as simple as um, uh, I would say like a pavilion, right? A, a, a pavilion a pavilion space um, for for the elephants to roam around but at the same time it is also um, where they they have their um, burial uh, ceremony when there's death involved um, with the with the elephants or even with the people this is where they will have um, their their events or or their um, funeral procession will take place is here. They will not be buried here, but at least it's for uh, you know it's carried out here, and it is interesting because you know it feels like oh it it feels very post apocalyptic, but it feels like it is complete. The sense of scale is perfect because it is meant for um, both elephants and humans to actually walk through this space. And quite nice. And every single, um, like the stones that you see here, how they actually uh, built these berms that, that goes up to the main hall, um, it's there for a reason. The stones they use, the, 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 the chippings that you use, they are there for a reason. It's for the elephants to scratch scratch their backs and everything and and that is just one of the purpose yeah the other is actually they create an embankment to avoid flooding and everything so um i think when you have um, a design element if it is justified and it is actually tackling more than one issue i think that is um that is a good approach to things uh, if you look over here there's there's even a uh, water catchment area um, because that area of Northeast Thailand, uh, where the Kuei people are, they are prone to flooding. So this project actually uses that, you know, okay, elephants, you need to bathe and everything. So they create an embankment, uh, they create a water catchment area, and they have a very strong um, architecture element to actually, uh, you know, uh, follow through with their intention. So that's, that's really, really fascinating. Fascinating to me, at least, right? Um, so yeah, uh, you can see that all the mounds here that they do, all the berms at the side here, you have people, you can sit here. These are more for festivities. It is randomly placed, but it is a huge contrast to the, how do you say, a very linear roof. Um, so these are the type of languages or design languages that you can incorporate in your in your thesis as well. Not everything that you do has to be like, okay, I'm going to do everything straight. You can deal with, with concepts like, okay, I'm going to deal with contrast. You can see the roof is all well done and clean, but as you go on to the ground floor, it is a bit more haphazard, but it is also fine because that actually creates a very organic, um interaction you know uh, when, when you have events and everything it, it feels very very organic yeah you can get a buff this is part of the great people a project as simple as this um they actually took note of what can be done and um let's talk about a bit of materiality um, all the materials that, that, that they get to build this are actually around that area. Now, that is a, a sensitivity that can be factored in when you do your thesis as well. I mean, um, if, if you're going to it's a more um, environment-conscious um, approach, right? So even building materials, you know, if you, if you, if you are going to have to source something from thousands of miles away, then that kind of defeats the purpose a bit. So this is another layer to your thesis that can be added on. Right? All right. Um, the final one, um, this is like my, my personal favorite 
project of all time, I think right now. Uh, the, the, the project is in China by Vector Architects. He actually came down to, to Datum once and, and presented this. I'm just going to um, show you guys that they're building all over again. Vector Architects is, is by Dong Kong. And um, I like the materiality. I like the continuity of architecture that he has shown for this particular hotel. Um, this is Alila Yangshuo, uh, Yangshuo, China. Um, you know, you get a very ethereal mountains and everything, and they, they have a very huge river or system of rivers around there. And uh, this is currently known as Hotel Yangshuo Sugar House. And the reason is that um, that particular site used to be an old sugar mill, sugar mill factory. So it is very, very fascinating because they, they actually adapted or uh, adaptive reuse, like you guys like to call it, right? Basically, you reuse whatever that is there, whatever that was abandoned and uh, to create a new function. And does he does not deviate so much from it. Um, so uh, it, it was actually a sugar mill. What you're looking at is actually the new building. Um, but if you look at his concept, right, it, it sells. Uh, his approach was not to like, okay, I'm going to do a contrast of the old and new. It's not. And, and he's not even trying to copy the old architecture, the sugar mill, the factory. What he did was just purely continuity. You look at the building, right? It, it does look very contemporary, but at the same time, the materials he chose, uh, it reflects part of the old building as well. It looks aged. It looks like it can season or it can age well over time. Like it is meant to be blended with the nature. So I'm, I'm going to show you what he means by that. So, Design wise, I think this is superb. Um, the the how how he actually created all the the concrete elements and and they were I would say that it is mostly ac accidental. Like um, when they built this, when he was explaining it, they built it with um, the limited local capacity to 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 produce the building materials. All the blocks that you see here, the van blocks, everything, were done by the locals using a custom-made <laughs> formwork. They actually build it themselves, right? Out of stones uh, or, or cement and whatsoever from that area. So dealing with um, locality and creating something that is totally new and, and progressive, it is um, a very challenging task, but I think that it, it reflects la, in the final architecture, which, which looks amazing. So um, if you look at this old building, right, this is the main block and the new block. Um, you can see that there is a continuity there, right? There is, you, you look at the sugar mill, okay, it's built by bricks and everything, but the color, the tones, everything actually followed through to the new building. So that is also another phrase or another theme that you, that you can you can incorporate in your thesis. Like if you have the opportunity to actually, um, you know, okay, I have an old building and how do I um, actually create new programs or, or do an extension, but not a literal extension. This is, I think, the perfect example how to do it. Um, he, he actually used water body to actually tie it all together. And as you can see here, right? Okay, I, I'm like this architect's fanboy, okay? So hear me out. <laughs> so he uses like this water body and um, to actually tie all the spaces together. And he dug um, the corridor way, the linkages below. So while you're walking down here, you are essentially walking, looking at the body of water. That is another experience to the architecture itself, right? How you actually uh, lead people in and out, as simple as that. Now, this is part of the factory overlooking the Yangshuo River. Um, they, they have the old industrial steel girders and everything. So they just reuse it. I mean, I mean this is not uh, groundbreaking or anything, but I would say that it is a perfect use of 
what people would usually demolish. You know, you see a structure that like, you know what, let's, let's do a pool there. And it kind of makes sense. Everything ties in well together. So um, there's reasons, like when he explained, there's reasons why you use all these bamboos. Because it is, um, there's, there's two reasons mainly. One is because he wants um, ties to the sugar, which is the, the sugar cane. He wanted that look. So um, bamboo is quite close with, with the ridges and everything. So that was the reason. See, even selecting the materials, he has his own reasons. So it looks like, okay, everything is supposed to blend together. At the same time, it is easily sourced around that area. So they actually use it. Even the formworks for these buildings are mainly um, done with bamboo. So um, it's, it's hard to explain this, but if you look at it, like, for example, this picture that they showed, right? It is something that is new, but it is also relatable. I don't think it sticks out as a sore thumb, but instead, it is a good, um, um, approach and uh, you, you know if you look at the architecture itself it doesn't um, kill the area it doesn't scream and you don't need a building to scream loudly actually uh, this is a, um, a good example I'd say um, I don't know whether you guys can see this video um, I'm just going to play you can, you can take from this YouTube channel they actually shared how they, they built the how they built the hotel. Okay. This is the existing sugar mill. They actually uh, they, they took out a few unused buildings here, but the main sugar mill factory was kept. Okay. These are the guys, they actually created this rig by themselves on site by the local people. So they, they invented a way to actually build this um, van block. And, and you know, uh, maybe you can't incorporate this in your thesis yet, but, you know, when you go outside, if you have the chance, this is the thing that I think would be fun as an architect to do. Um, you, you innovate, you interact with the, the local people and they actually, uh, you know, come up with really <laughs> interesting approach and way to actually build the building itself, you know, because it's not just you as an architect, you know, it's not a one-way dialogue when you do a building. It's always, you know, with the builders, with the local people, like, okay, how do you do this? So they actually built um, the walls and they, they, they tested it out, basically. So the, the screens here is like, um, I, I think is the main feature and it took them many, many tries for them to actually get that fan block right. Because like I said, it, it was an experimentation, but they, they actually um, managed to. Yeah, all the bamboo, uh, I think this is for the lobby, which looks really funky. There, this is what I meant. Quite interesting, right? You actually walk through the body of water, and uh, it's not rocket science, but I I think that this is what I would define as um, a, a very clean architecture. Um. Okay. So that is all that I have for you today. Um, I I think I've I've. Uh, I've explained myself like those those are the the the, the projects that I find um, really interesting to me, right? Um, but I think that the the key takeaway from all of this is the narrative. I think for your thesis, you need the narrative. I I think that you should move out from the um, what do you call that? This idea that. Okay, I'm just going to build a, a building, right? Let's say a community center. Lah. Let's say lah. Okay, I'm going to build a community center and that's about it. I just want to call people and, and the habit treater, you know, a building becomes a typology. You do not want that. You do want a bit of, um, you want the story behind it. You When, when you 
take the building materials, right? When you specify dalam you punya detail section that you can ask for, like what is it actually? Are those materials easily sourced? Are they expensive? Are they easily built? That's the level of um, detail that you need to achieve actually, right? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Architect Aslan, for the insightful and interesting topics. Okay, on the new web of architecture in Asia. Okay, uh, st students, should you have any questions, please drop it in the chat box, or later on you may open your mics to ask questions. Okay, so um, yeah, you keep the question first. So next, uh, let us invite our second uh, speakers for today, architect interior designer Faris Hume to give his thoughts, okay, on these futures architects. Okay, the floor is yours, architect Paris. Uh, hello, good morning. Uh, morning, like morning. It was a very interesting project, um, very low key, uh, something that many, uh, you know, uh, students might uh, always uh, start nampak this low key architecture uh, is very, uh, uh, it has a very uh, genius, genius local feeling, right? Um, however, today I am bringing a very uh, totally new topic. Uh, I, I, I have, I discussed, I discovered this idea is because after I went to a, a, a conference uh, last month. All right, uh, how to share the screen? I see. Okay, go to. Over your mouse to the bottom, there's a share. Yep. I click there. Yeah, okay. All right. So, good morning to all of you. Um, I believe you have seen the, uh, maybe some of you have seen this poster before. Don't look up. Yep, mm -hmm. Yes, pena, pena. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere, right? Uh, uh, is about um, um, end of the world, is it? Right? Yeah, <clears throat> one, one of the best movie lah. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also, um, you know, uh, intrigued by why this kind of movie has uh, uh, come out now. Okay, it's because of we as an architect, we want you guys, especially you, uh, Doctor PC, who are very young your uh, lecturer very young and then the students also uh, very very young so you are the future architects okay okay so um the agenda today is the only three um, global cri global climate crisis is going is already happening now okay so uh, and then um what we should do Okay, first of all, is global crisis is already happening everywhere around the world. Okay, if you watch world news, it's like every other day you will hear about earthquake or a huge flood or drought or hurricane or mini tsunami. Um, some of the um, things happening here and there, but Malaysia, nothing happened, right? Malaysia, nothing happened is because of it's not because of we don't don't have anything. We do have a lot of things happening here too, but it's not same like the others. Okay. Um we need to think slightly further, not to think what's happening today, because there are so many predictions happening starting 2030. Okay, it's this is a very critical thing. Okay, um, from, um, uh, you know, uh, it's not, we don't want to include a war, but uh, war also will create these problems too. <clears throat> However, um, the one that uh, in these uh, four photos, there's one here, a guy, a scientist, if you look properly, he is chained himself, actually chained himself to the bank it's because of he, uh, want to uh, tell the whole world that the climate crisis is already irreversible, which means 
it cannot be undone. What we are happening, the global uh, warming cannot be undone anymore. It's going to be continuing um, warmer and warmer by days. And because of that, there are so many things going to happen, uh, chain effects of it. It will be very catastrophic. So how does it look? So let's go to the topic one, which is uh, global climate issue uh, and what we should do. Yeah, as an architect, as a future architect, what are you going to do? You already learned so many things, so many times, many, many years about sustainable building design. It is not enough. We, as a future architect, we must do more. Okay, future architects must able to solve pollutions and pollutions there are many the one that we always always do always know water pollution land pollution air pollution sound pollution but the other one the light pollution is the least that our concern it is also very important why light pollution is one of the biggest contributor to global warming but we don't care because why it didn't affect us at all we can sleep some people can sleep in the bright light but not all okay animals cannot plants also need to rest so if light pollution continuing happening every day it won't solve okay but we heard about earth day but you know earth day you shut down everything but it's only one night and it's only one hour right no it's not about one hour it's the whole year you must do that whole year it's not enough when you do it one night and one hour only you cannot global issue about this is really important okay guys when you see these topics find this is actually as a um as a mind triggering ideas that might find you um, something that you want to do in the future what about the other one is food safety and food security this also a big issue especially 2022 indicator drinking water now is more expensive than the petrol clean water is more expensive and is going to be more and more expensive in coming years look at singapore singapore is already done something very important 30 by 30 i believe you all some some of you might heard about it this about it's because of number one singapore have almost zero locally produced food but when this going to happen especially during pandemic singapore decided to do 30 by 30 means that 30 percent of food consumed in singapore must be produced 30 percent of it must be produced in singapore of course they don't have lands like malaysia but we have lands but how much we produce in malaysia and compared to what we consume is less than 30 also we produce less than 30 percent of the food we consume the rest of it we import is very bad and malaysia where is our policy our policy is just okay we do give um, initiative to people here and there but is it only that we don't have target that's the biggest problem with malaysia we don't have target we as malaysia we cannot wait them as an architect you must start something first all right you must start something first because this will create a chain reaction to many people especially to the community another problem that we always forget and always um, always don't want to bother is another one is natural disaster of course um, war also um, stuff happening around the world like russia and ukraine syria palestine pakistan um, uh, palestine is the biggest one you know this everywhere happening but disaster is also happening you know every month we also see flash flood now KL sometimes shalom right so 
What do we do? What do we do as an architect? We just watch news and do nothing. Did you remember all those things actually come from us? The design, building design, the town planning, the urban design, the um, all those uh, water body creations, all done by us, right? We design those things. But why we don't, when it is, there is some problem, we don't bother, we don't even check how to solve it. No, this is not the way architects should think. Architects should think beyond that, not only design, but if there is a crisis or anything, our design should be able to respond. Our design should be able to, um, to work on this, okay? Sometimes, if the flood is happening so bad, we as an architect, we also must design something for the community. Build shelter. Of course, kita pernah ada. We have uh, a lot of shelter designs. But come on, man. You as an architect, you can do better than what we are being provided to the victims. You, architect, should do something better than that. Okay, don't worry about the bylaws. Don't worry about protect because protecting human is more important. Kalau you nak buat shelter from destroyed structures or from the dismantled um, building parts, do something about it. Yes, you can because all these are temporary. Um, from temporary, punya, uh, you know, you want to protect people. Do something. And designing, especially these things, you might be able to. Uh, transportable ke, foldable ke, and it's easy to to handle by people. So people pun jadi takkan nak kena tunggu aja. You as an architect should give the idea to people. Okay, we can do something about this. Kita being trapped in a very small place, we can do something. As an architect, we always be, must be always the forefront man to help people. Okay. Jangan sekadar tunggu sahaja and always, uh, I want to design um, some crazy building that is, you know, floating in the sky. Yes, you can. But helping people also is also important. Involvement in agriculture. This is another thing that it, uh, I don't know why. Of course, I um, just, just joined this uh, agriculture uh, less than 10 years ago. Um, what I learned actually quite a lot, uh, uh, especially how to make the plants produce better. Uh, this is very important too, because why? Architects do it, right? We are not robots that charge ourselves outside. Kena matahari, ah, we already charge, we already photosynthesis and we got food from our skin. No, we are not. We are human. We eat with food, right? With our mouth. So, agriculture be apa, be more knowledgeable in these two i really really I'm a, um kalau boleh want you guys to really understand about agriculture why because this is where our future will be not only about buildings about survival that's how we gonna gonna be you know help the community as a start and then the country kena ingat okay from the beginning of human civilization, humans start with um, protection of body, start with clothes, and then protection of being, start with cave, duduk dalam gua. And then we communicate through what? We start with drawings. We humans start with drawings to communicate. Bukannya tulis uh, pasal apa? theory of this, theory of that. No, we communicate through drawings, similar to architects, right? Can? Yes, this is how we started and this is how we should continue. We draw something that actually improving our lifestyle at the same time, save our own future. To save our own future, benda ni yang hilang. There is a big gap. Okay, the crisis that we are facing, and then how we going to, you know, survive beyond this crisis. 
Kita tak ada lagi. Kita tak ada this kind of plan. Kalau tak ada plan, I don't know what we should we do. Okay. By theory, kita hanya, we are the only, the architects, the only people study about balance on, of, apa, environment and development. We are the only people. Okay. Civil engineers, they, they learn very little about this. Uh, Town planners, they also learn very little about it. Or other engineers, very little. But human, I mean, architects, we learn more. We learn balance of environment and development. Okay? But in reality, that's the problem. Tak nampak. Almost no understanding of sustainable in design. I'm telling you the truth. You pergi mana mana, oh, nampak hijau. But semuanya artificial grass on rooftop. Itu je yang kita boleh buat. Why? Because kita malas nak apa, nak membuat maintenance. Maintenance is very, very expensive. Malas. But the thing is, benda yang malas tu yang menyebabkan kita become very um, complacent with our future. We tak, kita tak sedar that our future is going to be destruction. We are the only people who talk about sustainable. Tetapi kita kena talk about beyond sustainable now. Because in Malaysia, we are the responsible people that yang menyebabkan flash flood merata-rata Malaysia, clearance of paddy field, oil pumps, rubber estate, and then big development. Oh, best. Development kita best. 100 juta ni. Very impressive. Very good. Patut mendapat sanjungan di seluruh dunia. Flatten the hills. Reclaiming the lands. Of course, this is the best thing we do. Is this the best? Really? Is this? what we are supposed to do for our future, for your future, for your sons, for your daughters. Is that what we are going to do? Cannot, man. Cannot. Kita punya dunia, 70% is water tau. Satu dunia, bulat dunia, 70% is water. It will never change. Kita ratakan tanah, the amount of water is still the same, 70%. If it cannot go because of deep, they will come back and take our lands again. Okay, kena ingat benda tu. We as an architect, kita kena bagi tahu orang-orang yang orang-orang yang suka membuat um, decisions like that. We must tell them. Kita architect, we have a lot of knowledge compared to other disciplines. But we decided to keep quiet. I don't know why, but no. Starting from today, you as a future architect, tak boleh. You cannot shut down. You must talk. You must tell people. Food safety timeline. This is another important things. Ini, I do a lot of studies. Not only because of do studies, but also during the conference, I learned a lot too. Okay, I will tell you about the conference slightly later. 2030, yeah, we are going to eat less meat, less seafood. There are reasons of this. 2035, crops produce less and less and cannot help it. Even science, scientists cannot help at all. Okay, then the fossil fuel might be diminishing, diminishing due in 2040. Okay, future transportation will change, import and export will be almost impossible. But why? Because human should be able to use different mode of transportation, especially engine, but we don't, apa, tak nak, tak nak. We don't want to move away from using uh, oil. Nak juga pakai minyak. We can use electric. Tak nak pakai minyak juga. Why? Because minyak lagi power. But we don't remember. We are still, apa, going to kill our our own earth. Is this this is the best way to do? And then 2045, beast extinction. Beast extinction is already starting already starting okay but when it is extinct human only have five years to live why because bees is actually they are responsible is to pollinate almost 80 percent of our food okay daripada padi uh, kepada buah-buahan sayur-sayuran and all kinds of plants bees are the the, 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 the important peating important uh, uh, insect that help to pollinate. Without them, there is no more food. 
Okay, without them, why five years? Because number one, the animal, kita punya livestock, kita makan apa? Livestock kita pun makan sayur, kita punya lembu, kita punya kambing, kita punya ikan-ikan yang kita bela. Semuanya makan pada food yang sama dengan kita. Sayur, buah-buahan, uh, and so many things yang sama. <coughs> so, five years down the drain. But you as an architect, start, some, start things or something. Okay, this very important to us. Okay, and 2050, I don't know, man. Of course, we can survive, but maybe majority of human might not be. Okay, I don't want to have that thing to happen because my um, ex life expectancy is still have for 30 years, you know. <laughs> I still have at least 30 years, you know, to, to live. So I don't want to see all this happen. Um, sekat, apa benda ni? So you as a future architect, you should help us okay so are we ready for this are we ready if not what we should do okay what we should do okay another one is earthquake japan 2011 fukushima nuclear plant radioactive leak okay 80 percent of worldwide seafood will be inedible this is going as early as 2030 juga because of exposed to radioactive and it is toxic okay even now you can see the map there those fish that is um, uh, harvested around the purple area you can see all almost all fish ada tumor everything dekat dalam badan ke dekat kepala ke dekat ekor ke ada dekat kulit ke mesti ada tumor which is very bad cannot eat Okay, but kita tak tahu. Currently, we, based on the map, Malaysia belum kena lagi. But we don't know, man. Because our our water, our uh, water ni memang bergerak. It will not stop. Okay, and toxic, especially radioactive punya exposure, dia tidak boleh hilang begitu sahaja. Kalau dia dah masuk dalam badan ikan, it will stay there. You makan, dia masuk dalam badan you. Kan? So, of course, benda ni, Macam uh, tak apa-apa penting kot dekat kita. But yes, in 2030, those waters will arrive Malaysia too. And we, as a architect, are we going to let this going to happen? Kita kena do something before. Before this, apa, kita tak boleh makan ikan langsung. <coughs> Bukan ikan je lah. Korang punya favorite, ketam ke, udang ke, apa, lobster semua. None. No. So, and then kita lagi suka oi reclamation reclamation apa kita, kita nak apa sebenarnya faedah reclamation ni come on man we want to survive food safety is number one before food security food safety is make sure our food is safe and then food security is when we talk about protecting the food so we are guilty for size skyscrapers kill thousands of birds every year okay skyscrapers bagus cantik-cantik semuanya but the benefit untuk kita of course banyak sangat benefit untuk uh, humans but kita kena ingat we must be balanced for our life we want to live at least 100 years in on the line tak nak kita tak nak pendek we want at least 100 years kita nak hidup lagi lama okay so do something man if glass kills birds every year because they can't see glass, we should change for better um, so that, you know, birds can see what they are, you know, they fly better and they don't kill themselves. So, kena, kena, apa, be responsible, okay? Overdevelopments, okay, reduce forests to tiny patches of greens. These kill billions of animals. Tak nak lah. Okay, animals, I'm talking about so many things. Kita, kita, I also, I believe you all know, yeah, billions of animals ni, insects, uh, underground punya binatang, those things yang kita tak nampak, okay, all those things are actually important cycles of, uh, you know, uh, chain. And then vehicle city, okay, this is one thing that Malaysia memang favourite lah. 
Vehicle City push away all the animals, skills everywhere, skills pun jadi apa, pokok pun something yang sangat tak bagus kan? kan? Bila ada pokok aja, alamak nanti pokok ni tumbang, kena kereta. Bila kena kereta, insurans tak cover. So, we rather cut the trees so that we can protect our kai kereta. Is this the thing that we should be, you know, helping people? Tak. Tak. Kita tak boleh macam ni. And then, because of all this, apa works yang, if you notice, memang, almost all this, architect punya responsible. Architect yang buat ni semua. Cities, overdevelopment, skyscrapers, kita lah yang design. And what happened? Irreversible climate crisis. Many people, many countries. Okay, Jakarta, kita dah tahu. Jakarta is already sinking. Some of the places in Jakarta, dah ada, dah ada air dah pun, permanently, for one feet ataupun two feet some of them so some of the places and they have to move out from Jakarta they have to move to what where Kalimantan kan and then what are we going to do oh kita sebagai Malaysia arkitek kita um, nak bagi idea lah kepada Indonesia sebab apa sebab kita pernah uh, kita ada Putrajaya kita uh, ada experience a lot of experience to you know open a new city especially um, the apa dia panggil tu administrative city. So we are going to help to you know open more lands for in apa Kalimantan. Okay, kita nak ratakan a few bukit kat situ. Help us help the Indonesia to to have a better uh, administrative city. Okay, is this the thing that we are you know good at destroying city apa destroying forest and then do come on man. I don't know what to say. Of course, it's a good thing uh, for some country, but I I don't know. I feel ashamed when we see that our creations is actually destroying our own earth. I really, really feel ashamed. And then, just a fun fact for all of you, okay? A fun fact. Nature tree can drink up to 400 liters of water a day. If the root cannot access to water, how they can prevent the flash flood? Okay, contoh gambar di sini, we can see that tree trunk is huge, right? It's even bigger than manusia punya body. But look at the uh, opening under the tree. It's very small. It's only around one and a half feet, you know, lepas sikit dia daripada pokok tu. So, is that is the only space yang pokok dapat untuk not access to water which is very small so this is actually not the best way to allow plants to drink water okay when they can drink uh, water like that so many it actually can help us prevent flash flood i'm telling you the truth and this is very very important and if they can drink like that if you plant like you know 50 plants with this size you can help to, they, they will help us and drink a lot of water. When I say drink a lot of water, memang kita, human body kita, we can only drink maximum 2 liters, betul tak? Lepas tu kita berlotot dah. But, uh, pokok, they can drink like a lot more. And this is very important. Kita je tak nampak betapa pentingnya dia orang minum air. And kenapa dia orang kena minum air? Okay. At the same time, they pun produce oxygen. Of course, they orang tak produce Wi-Fi. But, oxygen is very important. Betul kan? Betul kan? Okay, I'm so sorry. Today, kita tak cakap pasal architecture design. Summary. Architecture is carving the atmosphere with unsafe materials that slowly kill the earth inhabitants. Betul ke tak? Somehow, it sounds correct too. Although, we don't want to accept this kind of uh, quote. Betul tak? We don't want to accept this kind of quote. <laughs> it's not uh, about a good thing. Architect has been known as a leader in civilization advancement. We should continue to do the same. However, we must change our role, okay, to save the earth as well, not only to uh, leader in civilization advancement. Save our earth. Okay? Tak cukup dengan civilization only. Earth is also important. We live here. 
tak sempat. Kita tak sempat nak cari another planet. Kita tak sempat. We are not ready to move to another planet. Of course, our our uh, friend Elon Musk uh, nak buat something for the Mars, but I don't think so. Okay, what I learned from the International Conference of Tropical Agriculture, ICTA 2022. It happened in the um, 26 to 28 May in KLCC Convention Center. Engineers are more excited to learn about agriculture than architect. I don't know why, but yep. I met space engineer, robotic engineer, software engineer, AI engineer, product engineer, and so many others, okay? They are really excited to learn about agriculture. They um, have um, many, many, many ideas. Some even space engineer. They are not astronomer. They are engineers. They even study macam mana nak jaga pokok, jaga apa plantations from the space. You know, monitoring from space. Sebab nak monitor from um, mat pandangan mata saja tak cukup. Sebab they want to predict, especially weather. Macam mana nak protect kita punya apa crops, especially bila tengok weather punya um, <coughs> weather punya predictions kan? Ada weather predictions, pastu macam mana nak protect crops? So they study this. They, you know, means that they always thinking about future prediction of weather. But kita architect. Apa kita buat? I am so sad. I am so sad. Kita tak ada this kind of prediction. Kita buat apa yang kita nak buat nampak depan mata and that's all. Ha, no, kita tak cukup. Tengok, in AI engineer, AI pun sama. It's talking about predictions. Kan? And then this AI engineer, dia combine dengan robots and then they can do so many kinds of predictions. Bila buah masak, bila buah tak masak, bila nak petik, bila nak apa kena um, kawal penyakit, they can do with AI and robots. Kita ah lain lain tak sama. <laughs> We don't have all those things. Even product engineer, they are not talking about recyclable materials anymore. Sebab I'm telling you, I'm sorry, recycle things are bullshit now. You can see, nak cakap pasal plastik ke, besi ke, semua recycle. But cannot be done. Kenapa? Plastik tak boleh recycle. Sekarang, banyak benda tak boleh recycle. Plastik especially. Why? Because plastik, dia ada many materials melt together with the plastic. Yang menyebabkan dia orang tak boleh recycle. Contohnya plastik cup. Plastik cup tu dia ada plastik layers dengan paper cup. Dua benda ni, dia kena separate dulu baru dia orang boleh recycle. Bila dua ni bergabung, dia orang kena bakar aja. Tak boleh pakai untuk recycle the paper cup. So, product engineer dah fikir benda lain which is called compostable material. Maksudnya, bila buang tu, dia boleh compost in one week or two weeks. Kalau nak recycle, nak tunggu dia recycle, that's why kita nampak ber, beratus-ratus ton of sampah datang ke Malaysia a few di, a few years ago. Betul tak? Because why? All those plastics cannot be recycled. Dia orang tampak baling aja kat Malaysia and then dengan harapan Malaysia ada ada apa ada uh, recycle punya kilang nak buat benda tu but the thing is it cannot be done now those engineers dia orang dah fikir one step further compostable so maksudnya campak aja apa benda tu dah pakai hancurkan and boleh terus masuk dalam tanah and that is compostable material ha uh, and that is really really uh, helping the uh, apa us Why? Because when dia campak dalam tanah, is because why? Because dia pun ada elemen-elemen uh, yang membantu baja. The thing is, dia orang dah fikir. But kita arkitek, apa kita buat? Bila saya dengar tu, I feel so ashamed. Macam dia orang fikir so far, although the materials are macam, you know, tak cantik lah. Sebab tak ada design. You know, they are product engineers yang fikirkan about compostable. So, they push away design first. Yang penting function tu jadi betul dulu. Baru dia orang fikir design later. Something that, you know, kenapa arkitek tak ada apa-apa yang nak contribute? Kan? We are creative people. Betul? 
where kita kena kita kena tahu pasal art, kita kena tahu pasal sains. Baru kita boleh jadi arkitek. Without these two traits that is very special, only very few people can handle architecture. Tapi kita tak boleh fikir that far. Something that I want to especially, you know, all of you, the future architects, help me to think together. Eh, kenapa bukan arkitek? Arkitek, bila saya pergi sana, I can't even uh, match their, you know, intelligence of thinking. Apa yang saya mampu is actually is only uh, uh, talking about small things. But it's not about that. Eh? Whatever about my talks is nothing to do with this. What's most important is actually the 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 forward thinking of many people already started. As an architect, I feel so responsible to tell this to to all of you. And topics presented: biological food protector. Apa benda ni? Biological food protector. They actually this engineer, the AI engineer, they use insect to protect the plants. Daripada kena makan dengan other insects, fungus, uh, apa bacteria, they use uh, predator insects. They are not, they are not remove, fully remove uh, insecticides. Something very, very interesting. Architect can do too. I mean, architect must learn a little bit how to have a very controlled place to do this. Yes, you can. Indoor vertical farming. Indoor, okay, tidak menggunakan cahaya matahari. Zero sunlight. They can use this. Why? They want to have food safety. Food safety is something that kita jarang dengar. Food security kita pernah dengar. Tapi before food security, we must have food safety. Which is means protect the food daripada rosak. Kita tanam um, 100 sayur. Usually in Malaysia, based on uh, farmers punya experience, based on um, tak nak cakap dengan ramai orang. 70 to 50%, 50 to 70% sahaja yang boleh masuk market. And then daripada 50 to 70% yang masuk kepada market, pergi ke supermarket and then dos sayur ataupun pergi ke pasar, kan? 50% je yang sampai ke users. Maksudnya only really really 30% sahaja yang betul-betul <coughs> human consume. Terlebihnya, bazi, waste, rugi. So, macam-macam dia orang fikir. Indoor vertical farm so that sayur tu tak rosak langsung. Boleh tahan lama, tak kena insight. Kan? And, however, indoor vertical farming is very expensive. Sebab kena pakai LED light, kena pakai aircon, kena duduk dalam bilik yang bercahaya, terang, konsisten. Lepas tu, apa sistem air, sistem uh, water punya recycle. Oish, arkitek nak fikir benda ni pun dah pening kepala. Pasal apa? Water punya um, apa recycling water daripada supply ataupun daripada rainwater harvesting. Lepas tu uh, apa masuk jadi uh, supply tanam uh, campur dengan baja, lepas tu recycle balik pergi ke waste, lepas tu nak recycle semua tu. It's a lot of uh, crazy shit happening there. Tapi Arkitek tak mampu nak buat. Kena minta tolong engineer juga kena buatkan. Come on man, arkitek is a lot better than this. Okay, aquaponics. Of course, some of you pernah dengar about this. Tapi, kalau di Malaysia, berapa banyak yang kita nampak yang betul-betul berjadi. Jadi dan berjaya. Singapore dah ada ratus-ratus bangunan dekat flat roof dia dah ada aquaponics. Dia ada ikan, dia ada sayur. Ratus-ratus bangunan sudah start di dalam Singapore. Kita bila lagi nak tunggu Kuala Lumpur nak bagi buat macam ni? I don't know man. Singapore dah ada banyak. They already started and we cannot wait. We must do something. Kita kena create this uh, apa culture di mana food also can be produced in the city center. I really urge you as apa um thesis uh, students start this idea as fast as possible <coughs> bring this forward to the minister ke apa ke cultured meat and insect protein these two things is something um crazy is because it started dengan um semua livestock in the world 
contribute to um, global warming especially lembu lembu dengan taik dia memang apa dia mengeluarkan gas methane yang sangat tinggi they contribute huge portion of um, nama in the whole nama kalau orang cakap pasal pollution punya uh, contributor yes the livestock produce a lot of uh, air pollution at the same time uh, greenhouse effect kepada dunia di mana global warming bermula so lembu sangat banyak so china and also malaysia dah start fikir pasal cultured meat and insect protein are we ready for this are we ready for this cultured meat <coughs> actually tak tahu is it plant based or not okay but are we ready to eat non real meat <laughs> A meat that is not real and is not even veggie. Insect protein. Memang dia orang akan pakai insect. Okay, dia panggil uh, black soldiers insect. Di mana <coughs> black soldier fly? Sorry. <coughs> they they have the highest protein content in their own body to to produce uh, protein and they can um, replace meat totally for uh, human growth. Tapi are we ready? And, and the problem is that this two is not halal and to certify halal i don't know how because these two um, <laughs> you know to 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 be halal is uh, one thing but suddenly we create artificial food are we ready to eat artificial food no we don't want right but if we don't bother about our earth yes we're going to eat this in the future soon palm oil as a replacement of cheese yes <laughs> korang kan suka cheese so uh, <coughs> because lembu akan dikurangkan dia punya population <coughs> i don't know bila tapi we shall see this going to happen if going that's going to happen population of lembu dengan apa dengan kambing dengan uh, ayam semua tu livestock produce is reduce and then the cheese also uh, production will reduce milk production will reduce and yes palm oil going to uh, take over so kita tak tahu kita makan minyak ke kita makan cheese and then of course the scientists don't don't say uh, bad things about it <coughs> minyak still minyak it goes into our body it become fat cheese is not because cheese is um, a per milk goes to into our body it uh, become protein but oh it is not <coughs> so these are the things that are being presented actually they are more but um, this I am talking about her, how important our earth that is actually um, uh, kena, kita kena jaga, we as an architect, we have a way to uh, protect it but we must start somewhere so how to take action? you, you as a, a future architect okay, you must start to be your own expertise jangan tunggu graduate baru nak jadi expert and when you start with that you will struggle struggle nak cari tempat kerja struggle nak cari gaji apa semua but when you start to become expert before you graduate then people look for you because of your expertise not because of you um uh, apa tak ada kerja no because of your expertise people will find you and in the future i don't know bila you graduate ke apa ke but you start to um, I mean, if this thesis is really good, you have the, uh, you know, minta tolong with your lecturer, present it for uh, something more important place, platform, and then boleh panjangkan kepada uh, kementerian ke apa ke, so that we, architect, we can contribute something to our own country. Kita start dengan uh, future buildings must solve okay solve water land air light pollution solve with that solve that first and then adaptive reuse expert ini pun penting because why because to be adaptive reuse expert ni something that semua orang sebenarnya tak suka pun nak adaptive reuse kita ada banyak bangunan-bangunan Malaysia yang dah buruk dan dah dibuat major drawing apa tu semua and it's left rot we didn't do anything about it apa salahnya kita adaptive reuse those buildings for better purposes and then kita tak perlu kalau boleh elakkan apa dia elakkan over development by adaptive reuse 
kan nak tunggu bila nak tunggu sampai whole land of malaysia dah habis baru nak buat adaptive reuse ke noh lah jangan macam tu we cannot we must also be the city green city designer okay green city designer ni of course i believe there are many places will be created uh, as a city but we must always tell our people green city is the thing that we must do <coughs> you can be other experts too as a food chain designer food chain designer kenapa short distance chain supply malaysia kita punya food express contohnya um, sayur datang dari mana mostly datang dari cameron betul tak tukang tu kuala lumpur about 200 km kan so it's very far and bayangkan kalau kita habis minyak ke apa ke kan minyak mahal ke sayur pun jadi mahal orang-orang miskin tak boleh nak makan so when we able to design a, chain, chain, a short distance chain supply contohnya di Kuala Lumpur itself can produce food contohnya sayur aje cukuplah <coughs> that can help to reduce a lot of cost okay vertical farming will be a real thing and not only for plants for livestock too you as a thesis designer okay design thesis architect PK, PK, macam mana nak letak ayam dalam kan dalam Kuala Lumpur? Macam mana nak buat ni? Control of food, control of pest, control of apa, smell ke apa ke? You design this. I give you ideas, do something. And then future will not only talking about plot ratio, but also must have green plot ratio. Dulu tak ada plot ratio, apa green plot ratio. Cuma ada cakap. Ah, kena ada sekurang-kurangnya 10% of the land to be green area. Betul tak? <coughs> In the future, dia akan cakap plot ratio of green space, green area. And it must be real green, bukan artificial grass. Okay? Green plot ratio mungkin diorang akan minta macam uh, uh, 1 is to 0.3, 1 is to 0.5. Ah, Lama-lama jadi 1 is to 1 green area. Ha, so pada pandai nak fikir macam mana nak letak green area in the middle of your building ke apa ke so that dia akan apa achieve a green plot ratio juga. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> And then apa pula? <coughs> Post disaster. Post disaster we have so uh, you know you have to be responsible. Sebab apa? Kita dah jadi arkitek yang mem membuat uh, flash flood. Kita dah jadi arkitek yang mem membuatkan so many glasses in the tower kan panas kan kitalah arkitek yang apa membuatkan binatang-binatang uh, semua tak ada dah dekat dalam bandar so what happen we have to be responsible back okay instant shelter ke uh, be creativity in so many things do ideas okay be this kind of designer pula okay <coughs> problem solver kita kena jadi problem solver. Dulu, dari dulu lagi, architects always be the problem solver of the community. But city for human, something that kita pernah nampak lah. I believe some of you pernah nampak dalam uh, social media. Contohnya Madrid, they already started since uh, 2011 lagi. Okay. Madrid is one of the best sample. Uh, 2011 lagi, dia orang dah start to remove their highway in the city and then replace with real green spaces okay real green spaces tapi kalau if it is edible better kalau tak edible pun tak apalah asalkan this contribute to all of us okay kita kena tahu another fun fact yang saya lupa nak cakap okay berapa pokok seorang manusia perlukan untuk dapatkan oksigen berapa pokok Eh, ini untuk kegunaan harian dan juga tahunan. Empat. Four major trees. Okay. Four major trees. Diperlukan untuk satu manusia. <laughs> I don't know lah. Banyak ke sikit. Tapi, we are going to nearing 8 billion in I think a few years. I think less than five years. Going to be 8 billion. Okay. Kita punya earth population. Walaupun dah lalu pandemik apa semua, the apa growth rate still meningkat, kan? <laughs> so it still going to be very near. So bila macam ni, how can we sustain kalau kita tak cukup oksigen nanti?
kan? So plants. Kena tahu, at least say this some fun facts, okay, about how the plant drink, how the plant apa nama give oxygen to us. Sebab apa? Sebab sebenarnya engineer tak fikir benda ni. Kita tolong fikirkan untuk dia orang. And please tell them, bukan saja tell them, tell us first. And then how we design the city supaya city to able. Okay, tengok macam contoh gambar ni. Walaupun gambar ni kecil eh, the open space of green area tu besar. So kalau flood, kan, all this water akan absorb masuk dalam tanah. Immediately pokok akan uh, apa drink up those water. Kalau kita ada so many apa tarmac, apa pedestrian walkway yang sampai 5 meter kan. These are very, you know, they dah seal the 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 surface from the water to come in to absorb into the earth. And that's how flash flood started lah. Sebab so many area <coughs> properly sealed kan daripada bangunan pergi ke longkang, daripada longkang dengan jalan raya, dengan jalan raya pergi ke pedestrian walkway and then daripada pedestrian walkway pergi ke drain, drain pun dah proper covered dengan culvert, concrete culvert. Macam mana those water nak absorb dalam tanah? Bila tak absorb dalam tanah, macam mana um, tak flash flood, betul tak? Sebab semua tak absorb, semuanya seal. Kan? Semuanya seal tightly. So, nak salahkan siapa? Arkitek lah juga sebab kita design macam tu. Repurpose building, existing building. Okay, at certain point, human don't want new development anymore. Okay, kalau korang tengok um, pattern, I mean, bukanlah pattern eh, um, studies untuk orang-orang yang ke bawah 30. Tak tahulah Dr. PC dah 30 ke belum, mesti dah lebih kot. <laughs> kan, so um, orang yang bawah 30, they have a mentality that, that they rather sewa daripada own property. Betul tak? If we do this kind of studies, you will discover actually yes. Those young people don't want to own a property. They rather live differently. They rather sewa je tak apa. For some reason, I don't know their mindset macam mana. But with that kind of mindset, what is the purpose of doing new development, right? Dah tak perlu dah. Do something, something like this. I believe um, our friends uh, ramai yang terror to do this. And beyond carbon neutral. Something important, yeah. carbon neutral kita dah seimbang many many years but beyond carbon neutral, sangat sikit. Kita, the new policy of development will be repair climate right crisis. This is very hard but yes, it can be done kalau all architects have the similar mindset. Mind kita kita sama-sama help to uh, pro protect our earth, repair climate crisis. <coughs> As a summary, the world issue will be more pressing. Architect must be the leader in Mother Earth's health. Tolonglah. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Architect Interior Designer Faris Hilmi. Okay, on giving us a very insightful and enlightening topics. Okay, so architecture, uh, basically we should view it as a set of the two steps for us to understand about the societies and environment. So rather than just simply a professions, I think uh, all the students don't because you are working students as well. So as what I usually mention, right, the thesis should always comes with the visions. So don't worry about the technicals first. You should have a big visions first. What you want to resolve as what both architect has mentioned. So both architect has shown you about the samples or the good architectures around the world. Okay, so basically it doesn't mean have to be uh, something like you say iconic buildings or something that you want to be very outstanding. But we rather we have to know that what is the function, the purpose of the rules of our architecture, the piece as a solutions to our nations and the world. So which make it different from just a project. So train in the principles of the design thinking and the space manipulations. So as architect should be able to find the innovative solutions. Both architects have emphasized this, okay, the innovative, because you guys are creative then. So we should do creative things. That means that you have to resolve and help out uh, our world to become a better places for not just for human, for our uh, flora, faunas to keep the walls rolling, okay. 
because nowadays we know that the global warming, okay, and all sorts kinds of the issues has happening now. Like we have COVID now, okay, because this is due to uh, disasters, the things that happens, okay, due to what we have done to our Mother Earth. So this global architectural issue faced by our governments, okay, uh, yeah, they are doing their works, okay, creating policies and so forth. But as an architect, okay, we have the visions as well. So we should contribute our roles in order to help out to make these a better places to stay. So the take away for the webinar series one today by our architect Aslan and architect Faris emphasize on our roles of the profession. And as you guys know that MR master in architecture is not just doing about the project. So the curriculum let you undergo is not just about the self uh, self centered design, but we want you guys to things okay how to create a new idea to resolve the issue accordingly like for example ptc1 you have the uh, social culture okay then ptc2 is about urbanism then ptc3 is about environment and don't wait until say oh they don't mind so i will wait until this is this is is best please the implementations it's like on how you make the ptc okay into a more relevance and practicals of the approach, okay, uh, in the your thesis, how you want to make it work. So start now for the pre-thesis students. So for thesis students, since this is the final stage of your MR's uh, uh, journey, so trying to uh, refine and look back on your thesis, okay, and relate to what both architects panel have mentioned today. So is your thesis comes with visions, are you going to sell these products? Okay, like your ideas, because this is going to be your trademark in the future. Okay, when people ask you what is your thesis for your MR, so don't just show them your so called like a project. So it should come with the visions first. Okay, before you present about the building. So guys, you have to be making clear, make this clear. So we are doing about the visions and giving the. Uh, provides a better solutions, okay, uh, by using the architecture the piece uh, of the works. Then it is more about the responsibilities. So when you grab up your thesis, things about have you achieved what we have mentioned uh, in terms of the sustainability? So what is the contributions towards the nature, society, the peoples, and the nation itself? Okay, in order to make it into a um betterments the the better uh, words okay i think that um this uh, will be the ends of our thoughts by both of our speakers so any questions from the students now i open up the q and a sessions uh hello okay. aisha here all right, so, good morning to uh, uh, Paris and uh, Aslan. So, um, the question that I'm having is um, to, towards more to uh, Paris. Uh, one is that one uh, in topic two that you mentioned is regarding cultured meat and uh, palm oil replacing cheese. What are the uh, topic that they elaborate regarding that matter where uh, how we say the palm oil going to like replace the cheese? What? going to happen to our own uh, agriculture in a sense that uh, more farming towards uh, palm oil. That's one. Uh, second is regarding the plot ratio for uh, green area. Does there a movement or um, a movement regarding to advocate regarding the plot ratio towards a uh, green area rather than plot ratio or build up areas? Um, that my question. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Aisha. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, number one, uh, tadi pasal um, pasal apa? Cheese, eh? uh, palm oil jadi cheese. This is a science scientist yang buat kerja. Uh, you know, they they study uh, of this because of um, cheese price. Uh, the they discovered that cheese price is uh, started to increase for some reason. Probably because of yes, same reason yang saya cakap tadi where the livestock will be going to uh, shrinking for important reason. Okay, they start dengan uh, global crisis, global climate is issue, and then they have to reduce the population. And then with that, the amount of production 
by the meat and the milk and the cheese are coming together with them phone reduce so palm oil still continue to to uh, produce at the same time kerana um, palm oil um, is one of the biggest uh, uh, income from malaysia and also um, <coughs> Uh, still important for uh, Malaysia Malaysians to pakai. Kita pakai palm oil a lot untuk minyak. Okay. And then um, uh, from the palm oil, the extraction. Okay, this is very uh, scientist punya sembang lah. The extraction dia akan keluar macam 5-6 jenis minyak lah. And one of it, you can uh, produce, um, um, that is like a, a food product. So food product yang dia buat ni actually banyak dah digunakan dalam makanan-makanan kita. And one of it, they can just turn a little bit uh, twist to the, I mean, adjust dia punya apa semua, dia dapat jadi buat cheese. And then put some flavor, dah memang rasa uh, texture um, almost same dengan cheese. So this is uh, something that um, scientists already discovered. They already um, thinking forward for a mass production on this. However, um, itu not, um, is just an optional for, for them to produce. Okay. However, um, for architecture, um, what we should do is actually we think about differently uh, how to be better uh, improving uh, kita punya um, buildings, building design ke ataupun um, I don't know man, I cannot think right now <laughs> about how to improve this and then um, <clears throat> can I move on to the next question which is the green plot ratio yang ini belum ada movement however has been discussed um, uh, on different country, Malaysia belum lagi kot, I don't know bila uh, but um, what we can see is that uh, because of the importance of uh, green spaces yang semakin lama semakin berkurangan tu and bila makin kurang um, the policy makers already start to calculate the amount of green area left yang ada dekat dalam kawasan lapang ke dekat pedestrian walkway ke, they already start to count that two. So, okay, tak cukup. The amount of greens tak cukup. So, they have to impose the green uh, plot ratio. But Malaysia, I don't know bila. But again, we cannot wait until the policy maker do the policy untuk kita. We start first with our own design on real buildings. Run. Betul tak? Kita start dulu. Tak apa. Don't worry about the people yang nak buat uh, law and policy maker. Don't. <clears throat> so um, with that I hope I answer questions uh, thank you very much because uh, we don't quite hear regarding uh, green plot ratio mostly we emphasize on build up area the maximum build, build up areas or uh, only 10 percent or le uh, maybe more less than 10 percent of green areas so it's quite new actually uh, during this talk yeah but all actually you you pretty much said it lah it's all about the <clears throat> you what you when you green kawasan lapang just because it's a requirement so that is <laughs> that, that that is the issue lah sebenarnya kan faris like you um i, I think the challenge kalau nak implement that is basically you as an architect need to learn how to sell better because to developers is to them it's all about um, forgive me for saying this but it's always about dollars and cents right how many build up to justify the profit margins etc etc but um, I, i've seen examples overseas where they actually implemented a lot of greens i think the trick to that is if they can pull it off means we can too so it boils down to how you actually pull off your architecture to convince your client who is money oriented that it is wise <laughs> to do the green spaces, you know. So that that part, that is how you do it. So yeah, I agree with architect part. So just do it now. Lah. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for the answers from our architect. Students, any other questions? It could be any, okay, maybe you want to ask some things that are relevant to your thesis. Also can that because uh, they have given you a very 
uh, enlightening and insightful kinds of the ideas, okay, both architects. So for those PTC students, okay, you still have like one more semester, two more semesters. Yeah, I think architect Faris especially giving you a lot of ideas, especially on the Enviro Studio. <laughs> it will be happens next semester. So this is exactly what we guys, I mean, the syllabus, okay, the curriculum want you guys to do. You have to think ahead. It's not just repeating and replicate whatever that happening in the market now. You should find a solution, the so issue first. That's why I keep mentioning issue, 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 come first. Okay, you're having an issue, only you're having a vision. Then only we come into the implementations. Okay, students, <laughs> any other questions? Other than Aisha? <laughs> Everyone is so <laughs> shy. Okay, I think uh, probably they they have questions. So if you have any questions, you can uh, let me know. So tomorrow we have another session with architect Tian Suying. Okay, uh, from the urban panel. Okay, um, probably if possible, maybe both architect can join as well. So if students you have any questions, maybe you can try to keep first and you ask it tomorrow. All right. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, both panels for today's uh, with uh, the both interesting topic. So later on, um, I have, okay, uh, before that, I have shared the attendance link at the chat here. So please fill in the attendance link. Okay, so before we end the session, shall we have a uh, snapshot of the photo sessions? So students, can you switch on the camera? So I need to take the proof for our, uh, accreditations as well as the external examinations sessions. Okay. How about the rest? Just want to make sure you are here. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, ready? One, two, tunggu. Okay, okay. Siapa buka kamera? Tolong sekarang. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Another one. One, two, three. All right. Okay, thank you very much of uh, our panels as well as our students. So I've shared the uh, WebEx link, okay? I mean the table uh, links in the WhatsApp uh, for both panels as well as the students. So because this week is Architect Week, so I just uh, let architects panels to handle it. So later on, thesis and PTC students from each of the group, please join in the link and discuss with our architect panel, see how you guys want it to be. Probably half today, half tomorrow, or some of the panel prefer to meet uh, in the campus. Okay, I think that is totally up to our uh, the panels to decide. All right, so uh, here's with, I think I end the sessions for today. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Tana. Bye-bye.